What's going on everybody? Chris Esplin back with more Firebase. Again, today we're covering data modeling. We're gonna cover particularly how I like to handle authentication with a client. So every time the client logs in, they're going to push some data to a queue. And my server is gonna to listen to that queue and gonna manage it a little bit, create a user account for them. And you'll see just pretty straightforward, pretty simple how to, how to use Firebase as sort of a message bus between your client and your server. It gives you a lot of security options, a lot of flexibility. Let's get to it. All right, over here. Let's start with the server. The server is, just requires Firebase, initializes Firebase. In fact, we can do this all in one line. There we go. There's our Firebase, and it makes a ref. In this case, we're gonna use slash data dash modeling. Then we're gonna have a logins ref, which is user writable slash login queue. Then an accounts ref, which is going to be, ooh, let's make this user readable slash accounts. There we go. And then I'm gonna have a list of admin emails. In this case, it's just gonna be my email, chris at quiver.is. Great. So you'll see what's gonna happen is, we're gonna to listen to the logins ref, which is this queue right here. We're gonna to listen to the login queue, logins ref. And every time a child is added, we'll log that out. We're gonna pull the user off of it. We're gonna pull the ref off of it. Check to see if the email on that login that user object is in the admin emails list. We'll add a little last login timestamp. Then we'll update the accounts ref at that user ID, user UID with the user. We'll just do an update one to a set so we won't overwrite anything that, it, that we don't want to, that we may write in a different operation later on. And then we'll remove the user ref. Okay. Uh, Index.html. There we go. All right. You, know, you may have seen this in a different video that I've done and I'm gonna reshoot it again with some authentication. It's basic authentication through here. I'm not gonna go over that right now. What I'd like to go over is just, so skip, skip, skip all this authentication fun stuff and get down here to app.messages. So I'm going to be maintaining, just note for later, I've got app.messages up here. This is all in Polymer. You can ignore the Polymer. The Polymer is just to sort of tie it all together. What's really important to this particular tutorial is the Firebase. So I'm gonna to listen to auth changes on auth state changed. I get a user. Now, if there's a user, what I'm gonna do is go here to the data modeling user writable login queue. That same queue we were talking about right here. There we go. We'll go to that. That'll be, we're gonna call this in this case, the login queue ref. And then we're gonna have a user login ref, which is gonna be child of the login queue ref just user.uid. So it'll be data modeling, user writable, login queue ref, slash UID, like that. Okay, I'm just gonna log, console log out that string, the, the ref string so you can see what that looks like along with the user object. Then I'm gonna set it. There we go, the user login ref. We're gonna set equal to the email, the UID, email verified, and photo URL. And this is sort of the payload we're sending from our client to the server. And we'll catch any errors down below. All right, so let's just do that right away. And hopefully here, let's, let's turn off the server so you don't actually see it right there. I'm gonna log in. Let's sign in with Google. This all works. We've got lots of different accounts running on this machine. There we go. So I've, I've got one there, let's see what landed. All right, user writable, so that landed. The login queue, right there. So let's, let's delete this just to show how nicely that works. And I'm going to, in fact, expand this a little bit. All right, so every time I reload the page, it's gonna run this auth check. And because I just authed, my, I've got authentication saved. So I'm gonna be in here, I can, I've, I've got a user object and you can tell my user is this guy right here. It's a little messy. So one thing you'll notice is with Firebase, you can't save complex objects to Firebase. You can't save functions. That's the big catch. So you gotta save strings and booleans and numbers. So that's why we're not just gonna save the whole 
user object, we're going to save just the email, the UID, the email verified, and the photo URL because we don't we want to skip over all this nested JSON stuff. Okay. So note, we've got our login. We've got our user login. We're going to log that out. You can see down here that's logging out to quiver 2 that firebyso.com data modeling user writable login queue with the UID from the user. And you'll notice that that matches user.uid. It's all the same. Okay. We'll write that and that'll be great. Let that play through. So write. All right. Now I've proven to you that that works and does what it says it does. And you'll see it's writing it right here, the login queue. Now I'm going to run this little listener at index.js. So index.js is going to listen to the child out of the vents. So it's going to pull off all the children here. It's going to process them and then delete them once it's done. So it'll update the user and then it will user dot, user ref dot remove right there. Let's run that. Check it out. And there we go. We've got an account and we've got our user account down here is admin is true because it went through the admin emails and it set that appropriately. All right. Well, that's odd. Okay. Quickly, got to make some sense out of this user readable and the, the rules associated with this. So you'll notice it wrote to data modeling slash user writable. And now the accounts are under user readable. Let's go to my rules. I've got a lot of rules in here. There's a ton of demo data, but let's just go here to the bottom. For data modeling, I've got read true for everybody. I could probably get rid of this. This is just for demo purposes. Then I've got user readable, all types. So it, it, it wildcards to the type. So the fact that there's an account there, so user, read, user readable slash account. Account is just sort of the type. And that way I can add lots of different types and it'll always be readable. And then the UID is the UID for the user. That's another wildcard rule. And then as long as the auth.uid matches that UID, I can read it. You'll notice user writable is exactly the same, except that it gives, I give it write access, not read access. So in this case, you've got sort of this message bus system where the user can write to one node, can't read that node, but then the data will backfill to the user account. Okay. Let's go to the next step of this demo. Go back here to data modeling. All right, so you've seen the account is flowing through correctly. Next, I want to send some messages. Let's cancel that again and we'll do the messages. Hey, you guys, there we go. Just send a message. Now, what we're doing here in index.html is we're doing the same sort of shuffle with the queue. So this app.message, which gets, this is a function that gets called when I click send. And this is going to have a little bit of polymer, not too much. Hopefully that doesn't throw you. So if there's no app.user, then we'll log out. Hey, not logged in, return, bail. Otherwise, we're going to get the message queue ref, which is Firebase database ref, data modeling, user writable, message queue. In this, in this case, instead of login queue, it's message queue. And actually, let's see if we can make that. Oh. There we go. We'll, we'll wrap that. Okay, so message queue, you can see that the message queue is here. Next, we're going to get the user message ref which is going to be off of app.user.uid. So it's the message queue slash the UID. And then we'll just set it to an, the email address of the user, app.user.email, and then the message text, which in this case, a little bit of Polymer, is app.messagetext. So you'll notice over here in the console, you see user writable message queue. I sent a message. It's right there. Now if I change it, check this out. Another message. Notice it's just overwriting it. So I'm not going to let, I'm not going to ever allow this user to have two messages in the queue. It makes it really simple because I can use this UID. I don't have to push a bunch of records, manage a whole bunch of different potential messages in the queue. They can only have one message in the queue at a time. So they've got a message in the queue here at this UID. Over here, I've got my index.js. And you'll notice we've got messages ref dot on child added. So it's listening to the message queue again. And on every child added, it'll pull off the message ref, uh, pull off the UID, which in this case is just the, the key for the snapshot. It'll pull off the message. 
And then we're gonna get the user readable messages child UID. So we're gonna be able to write it to another re user readable node. In this case, we'll call it messages, but it's arbitrary because we used a wildcard in the data rule. Any text we put here will have the correct, uh, sorry, the correct security rule applied to it. I'm gonna put a timestamp on it just for kicks. Then I'm gonna push it to the user messages list. So let's run this. And you'll see it finds that child added and it says, hey, I got a queue item. It'll delete that once it gets to the messages list. And check that out. This is the UID and we just pushed a message. So we can push lots of messages to this. So I've got it running now. So I can say, hey, hey, you guys again and run it and it'll just flow right through. It's that fast. And just send and send and send and it flows right through that message bus system. And I don't need to have any HTTP open on my server. My server's just listening to Firebase. It can be in a Raspberry Pi. This, this node, node function can be running on a Raspberry Pi on my wall. It doesn't have to have any access to port 443 or port 80. This is not REST, this is a WebSocket, and it's using Firebase as a message queue. Great. What we really need to talk about, just for a second, is how you structure this data. And you'll notice what I'm doing with this is I'm writing the user messages under user readable slash slash user messages slash UID and pushing it there. I'm not pushing it under the user object. It's not under their account or anything like that. I'm breaking it out into a separate data structure. I'm also going to have to duplicate data. So let's assume that someone else sends a message to my user. I'll have to write it under both users, under that user's user messages and under my user's user messages. You're going to have to duplicate that data. So I can show you quickly what that looks like. If I were to write another user message, I would say, so let's add some push key. Now under here, we can add our three keys. We can say email some other user at gmail.com. Great, add all that. You come over here, we've got, hey, some other user. Ah, looks like we've got a, a garbage one here too. Anyway, so the idea here is I've got to duplicate data. If I've got a user leaving a message, any recipient is gonna have that message copied to their data structure as well. What this does is it avoids joins. It puts all the work into the right step, that right operation. So the read is very, very simplistic. And that's great for Firebase because Firebase doesn't have very sophisticated reads. It really just reads off of a data stream, in this case, user messages. So because I can only read sort of in a flat way, I can't do these fancy joins like you're probably used to with SQL or some other document collection models you really have to put all the complexity into the right step. And that may mean duplicating some data. The other big trick with this is that you've got to keep your data models extremely shallow. You'll notice I didn't nest things any more than one or two deep. I'm trying to keep it as shallow as possible because you can't do shallow queries in Firebase. So if the, if the data model's deep and you query at the top level of it, you're going to get that whole depth of that data model. So if I had an account with a bunch of messages, an arbitrarily growing list of messages underneath it, if I ever query anything on that account and want to pull that account down, I got to get all that message data as well that grew arbitrarily. So you don't want your objects to be able to grow arbitrarily. You want to have control over that. Now, if you have data, which you will, that's going to grow arbitrarily, that's when you use lists push key based lists, like, like user messages slash UID, you'll notice I used push keys. Every time I pushed to it, there was a new push key. In that case, I'll always be listening to that ref as sort of a data stream, listening to the bottom, say 10 records on it or something like that, and maybe paging up or down somehow. You would never want anything, you wouldn't want to mix arbitrarily growing data with non-arbitrarily growing data, like an account. So you'd never mix and nest that sort of arbitrary data under an account. You always want to have good control over how deep your nesting is going to go. You want to keep it as shallow as possible. And you also want to have good control over how much your different nodes are going to grow. And be very careful with that because you can run yourself and sort of code yourself into a corner if you have this mix of arbitrarily growing lists in with 
data that's not arbitrary, data that data that is sort of an object on the list. You don't want to mix that up. So I want to be able to query all of my accounts to pull all the email addresses to send an email blast out without pulling down those accounts user messages. I want that to be separate. So I'm going to do sort of like a join on the client side. And that's the, really the key to well, these two keys that we just covered. Those are the, these are the keys to success with Firebase data modeling. You want to move all the complexity out to the right step and duplicate data to the point where your, your data matches the view perfectly. You want it to match exactly what you want to read. So if, you've, if you're going to have two different views reading the same data, you may need to write it two different times. Not a big deal because you're going to have a server process managing that right anyway. You're going to need some security. You're going to need some what we call data fan outs where you take data, incoming data and write it to multiple locations. That's a really, really common model with NoSQL. So because you're doing these data fan outs already, it's not that big a deal to just write it in two locations. Now, if you've got a SQL background, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, Chris, this is terrible. You don't want to duplicate data. That, you know, that's, that's, that, that's against everything I've been taught. And yes, it is against everything you've been taught. And if I were doing a relational database, I would never duplicate data because relational databases are great at joins. So you can do these really sort of straightforward writes and keep your data in a really nice logical way. But then your reads all become just a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more complex. Firebase is the opposite because Firebase wants to be able to read just tons of data in these crazy fast real-time data streams. And you can't be mixing complexity with speed like that. It doesn't work very well. You'd, you'd have a sort of a tough trade-off to make. So when they designed Firebase, they designed it for speed and not necessarily for complex joins. All you got to do, move the complexity out to the right step and you're done. Problem solved. Okay, so that's the first First big rule, move complexity to the right step, model your data, or write your data to Firebase just like you'd like to read it, duplicate as needed, who cares? It's just a few, few bytes of data, not a big deal. Okay, the next big step you gotta keep straight is to keep that data shallow. Do not overly nest that data any more than you've got to. Break it out appropriately, especially if you have anything that's gonna grow arbitrarily. Don't mix that up, those lists. Don't mix those lists with their push keys up with data that is sort of more static. And as long as you can keep those sort of types of data separate in your mind, you're not going to run into this scaling issue where you, you try to query an account and you get all the messages too. Or I mean, you, you wouldn't want that account to grow any larger than it has, than it has to. You, you try to keep your different chunks of data relatively small so that your data scales out forever. And this is great because you ever end up needing to shard at all, do anything like that. Because the complexity is all on the right, you're going to get eventual consistency really nicely with your reads. Your reads will always be performant. You can shard as much as you'd like to, and the reads will always work. You're just going to have a little more complexity built into the right step. So that's all I got for now, for today. Thanks so much for listening. Please hit me up in the comments with any more questions. Please subscribe if you'd like to hear more about this, more about data modeling. I'm, I'm going to keep covering more and more of these topics and hopefully cover everything to the point where there will be nothing left to cover and you'll just know all the Firebase you need to know by listening to the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks so much and see you later.